Independent Regulatory Board of Auditors, also referred to as URBA, recently released its public inspector's report for 2014-2015 that documents inspection findings identified over the past financial year. I'm now joined in studio by Bernard Agalis, who is the Chief Executive Officer of URBA. Good to have you with us today, as always. Hello. Good to last time nice we spoke, it, indeed, last time we spoke, uh, we touched on the uh, fantastic auditing standards that we have in the country that uh, rank us one, number one globally. But... Uh, the investigations that you uh, in, in instill in the auditors actually contributes to this global rating. But tell us more about uh, the results of the inspection, the ins inspection survey. Good. Maybe I should start off by explaining the need for inspections. It's important that we perform inspections on auditors and their work because once um, the public knows that the work of a professional person is inspected, they will have confidence in the work that they deliver. And, and when there's confidence in the work that auditors deliver, which is really um, uh, to give confidence to investors of the financial statements on which the auditor reports, then there'll be investment and there'll be creation of employment. So the, the, the role of inspections and regulation is very important. But of course that is underlying, what underlies that is, is, is the audit itself, the audit that auditors perform. That is mm. also valuable to, to investors because it gives them the confidence that um, the assets that they entrust to management can be independently verified. So that is the importance of, uh, of an inspection. Before we get further into the results, the auditors that you inspect, does this entail the Auditor General? No, the Auditor General is referred to as a Supreme Audit Institution and the Auditor General is responsible for auditing the public sector. The auditors that we inspect are auditors of private sector entities, but the Auditor General may request private sector auditors to assist him to perform audits of state departments, of mm -hmm. public entities, the audits that he, that the audits that he is, is responsible for. Mm. Coming back to the results then of the uh, independent auditors that you have uh, uh, investigated, I understand 16% of the firms uh, and others actually needed to be uh, uh, sent further for investigation. Does this, uh, how does this tell us about how we fare when it comes to our performance? I think that um, uh, the, the reason that we have a, a large percentage that goes, once inspection is performed, <coughs> the result could either be satisfied factory. It could be a re-inspection, which means we go back after 18 months, or they could go for investigation. That is really when the results are, are very serious. The outcome of the inspection is very serious. But it's not just a matter of, um, it doesn't mean that auditors have performed poorly in giving the wrong audit opinions. It just means that they were non-compliant with auditing standards, financial reporting standards, or the code of ethics. Some of them are not so serious. But it's important that they still refer for investigation because that instills in auditors the commitment to high audit quality. And that is what we want. Um, we also have processes in place. We call it the remedial action process, whereby after the inspections are released, we can request from auditors a plan to remedy the situation and provided this buy-in from the leadership of the audit firms I think we we can actually salvage the situation quite easily. We're also working with the South African Institute of Chartered Accountants. That's yeah. the professional body for auditors. We're the regulator, they're the professional body. And um, together, I think we, we have measures in place to, in, to ensure that now that we've got the findings, we can work on improving them. Mm. This uh, type of regulation regarding the inspections, what does it tell us about the importance of uh, uh, auditing boards? Uh, and their relevance. A very, very critical is the role of um, the board of an entity and the audit committee of an entity because they are entrusted with um, audit o auditor oversight, which means that they must decide which auditors are appointed. They must decide what the fees are, what the scope of the work is. So, so they have a very important role. And they must also ensure that the auditors that they appoint are independent. This is very important. Mm -hmm. The RBA is focused on strengthening auditor independence because with auditor independence comes higher audit quality. The auditor has to be independent of the entity that they audit. Yeah. And that audit committee must also look at certain audit quality indicators. Audit quality indicators when an audit firm is appointed is things like how independent are they? What is their capacity? What is their competencies? Uh, what is their financial stability? Mm. So they have a very important role to play. Mm. To close off with, when we look at uh, the skills base in South Africa, are we seeing a strong pipeline of up-and-coming auditors? We who we'd like to see more. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's such an attractive profession. Uh, if, 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 if our um, young talent understood what, 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 what the excitement is in the profession, I'm sure that we'll see a bit more. We're not seeing as much as we can, but um, uh, the pipeline is there and we're working hard on increasing the pipeline.
Well, that's what we're here for, to uh, encourage uh, those out there to uh, hopefully see the excitement uh, within the auditing sphere. Thank you so much for your time today, Bernard. Thank you. Great having you with us. That was Bernard Agalas, who's the Chief Executive Officer of the Independent Regulatory Board of Auditing.